Hi, I'm Rick Dallaire with the Edison Tech Center. Uh, I'm, I'm the resident light bulb collector guy, I guess you want to call me that. Uh, and I'm going to give a little brief history of the early days of incandescent lighting. Uh, starting from the early Edison days up, up until when tungsten filaments came along, the Mazda lamps. And uh, the first lamp that I'm going to talk about is uh, the early Edison lamp that was invented in 1879. It had a uh, carbonized sewing thread filament and uh, Thomas Edison got about 40 hours out of that first bulb. Actually he would have got longer but he got impatient toward the end of the test and he started raising the voltage until he finally blew the filament out. So ironically he could have got longer life out of the bulb but he, he got impatient with it. Uh, but after that, shortly after, he came up with what was known as a paper horseshoe lamp. And that lamp would burn about 400 hours in service, which was pretty good for the day. He hadn't come up with a screw base yet, so the lamps were mounted on wooden bases. And uh, I have a replica here that was made in 1929 of, of that first lamp. Now this particular specimen has a squirted cellulose carbon filament, which is much later, because that's what they used for, for the replica lamp. But this one here was for the 50th anniversary of the General Electric Company, and uh, it's quite a rare item today. And this is basically what his first lamp looked like that, that he used in any, any kind of quantity, commercially. It was rated about eight candle power, between four and eight candle power. And the four candle power lamp drew about 20 watts, so it wasn't very efficient. It was only about one and a half lumens per watt. But at the time, this was quite a development. The bulb was glued into the base with, with, uh, with plaster, which, you know, that's before Edison hit on making a replaceable bulb. And what he did with these bases eventually is he made them so that there was metal plates inside so you could remove the bulb and replace it. Just like today's miniature Christmas tree lights where they push in and pull out and the wires are just folded up on the side of the base. Edison did that and he did that until about oh around 1881 or 82 and then he started to develop the screw base lamp which still had the paper horseshoe filament at that time. But Edison was looking for a better filament Paper horseshoe was okay, but it was expensive to make. It was hard to make. He'd have to go through many hundreds of them before he finally got one in a bulb that, that would last. So he, he got away from this design, and then he started to go to a screw base, which initially had male screw threads on the bottom and a ring just above it to make contact. So it was just backwards of what today's light bulbs are. But he finally... He used that for a couple of years, which was okay, but it was kind of a flimsy design. He had trouble with it. So around 1885, he came up with this lamp design, and this is what's known as an Edison taper neck lamp. This particular specimen is 1888, and it's new old stock, other than what little service it's seen at low voltage like this, which I don't consider puts hours on the bulbs because of the fact that when you run them at low voltage like this, it doesn't really tally up the hours. The hours are, are rated at, at full brightness. But this particular model has, a, has the standard Edison base as we know it today. It'll fit any modern socket. The base is glued on entirely with, with plaster of Paris. Edison liked that on his early bulbs. Worked well unless it was used in a damp location. Then they had a tendency to crumble, but most of them held up well. And the reason why they call it a taper neck is because the way the neck tapers down on the bulb to the base and the way the base, the top of the base tapers in, it's just one of Edison's design features that he used because the bulbs were hand blown. This particular model has a bamboo filament. It's, it's one of the earlier bamboo filament bulbs, but not the original. The, of course, the original came out around 1882. But the filament remained pretty much the same. He used a Japanese bamboo, which he went to Japan to search out. 
And uh, the filament, when they cut the filament, they did it by hand with a, with a cutter. And the filament isn't round in cross section, it's actually square in cross section because of the fact that it was hand cut in a cutter. And then they would carbonize the filament, put it in the bulb and seal it through the tip, which would be the norm for incandescent lamps right up until 1919. And uh, this particular model here was the first lamp that Edison made in any quantity, you know, in other words, that he pr mass produced. They were handmade bulbs, but he pretty much mass produced them, you know, to the best he could by hand. The socket that it's in is actually an original 1888 socket, and the lamp that it's in is another antique lamp that I put the socket on. It's pretty authentic to the era. And uh, this lamp here is pretty much what started it all in lighting, you know, as far as being commercially feasible, where, where they could sell it on the market. And also, quickly, there's, uh, this is another Edison socket from circa 1888 with, with a key switch, and it's functional. The only thing it's missing is the porcelain ring, like this one that screws on, but uh, I have one, so I'm probably gonna restore this and put it on a drop cord. So I'll have two options for cords, or for sockets for this lamp. Uh, as time went by, Edison improved his lamp. This is another bamboo filament lamp. This is a showcase bulb, tubular bulb. And this particular specimen is um, around 1900. And it's just before he started to go to, to the squirted cellulose. Actually, he went to squirted cellulose in 1892, but he still made some bamboo lamps as late as 1900, especially in tubular bulbs because he needed a short filament and since bamboo had a, a lower resistance than squirted cellulose, he could use it in a, in a small bulb like this successfully. So bamboo stuck around for a while, but this is a nice, nice example of, of a rare early Edison bulb. And then Edison, again, in, in 1892, he came up with squirted cellulose where they dissolve cotton in zinc chloride, and then they squirt it through a dye and as it comes out of the dye, they coil it on a drum, and then they wash it to get the zinc chloride out of it, and then they, uh, they carbonize it. So the filaments were squirted through dyes. They could mass produce them in large quantities. This specimen here was made around between 1904 and 1910 in that range, and this was the most common Edison bulb ever made. It's the most popular. There's still gazillions of these things in existence today that still work. It's a, it's a 16 candle power, which by the way, the 1888 bulb I just showed you was 16 candle power. And I believe this tubular bulb is eight candle power. So that's about the range they were in, in that era. But this is pretty typical of the Edison bulb. They made these bulbs with the carbon filaments right up into the, probably the 1930s, but they were pretty much overtaken around 1907 when GE started to develop the sintered tungsten lamp, which they took tungsten powder and they sintered it in, into, a, into a horseshoe shaped wire. And they put four of these in series in each light bulb. They were three times more efficient than, than the carbon lamp, produced three times more light for the same amount of power, but they were so fragile that when you, when you handled the bulbs, you, you had to carry them either base up or base down. Thank you for watching the first segment on the carbon filament lamp. Uh, the next segment will be on the Mazda tungsten filament lamp. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next segment.